This looks like the bonus round set. I hate you right now. <laughs> Can you put down your Google Glass? For you? Yeah. For you or for them? For them. What am I doing this for? That looks good. Oh, there no, you go. Is there head tracking on that? No, it's the only it's the only thing I've worn this week that isn't a fucking VR headset at this point. So Yeah, so what we saw Cast AR, Oculus, yeah. and the Sony thing. I guess like the uh, Project I, Morpheus. Sorry. There's a bunch of you know, we've got beginning the emails all week. There's a ton of different VR headsets. There's like one set up on the corner right now. See, I like, outside like a personal on a, masseuse. Outside thing. on a tent. Yeah, I think a, they'll give you a personal masseuse just to play with it, yes. Yeah. There's two more I'm checking out tomorrow by some you know, other companies. We saw Cast AR, which really isn't VR, it's different. It's it's augmented reality and it's by, by a couple ex uh, Valve employees. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely doing it different. It's uh, I guess the closest thing we've seen to a holodeck. Is kind of where they're building up to. Still a thing you wear on your head though, right? Still a thing you wear on your but head. But now you have to put up special paper for it to actually project onto. But you were saying that you could like actually have like paint that they could. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, was, like, it sounds it's like, like some sort of reflective or something like that. surface. Yeah. So I bet you should, you know, at one point just be able to paint and wear, you know, they were talking about like taking rings or wands and having right. different ways to like interact with the world. Uh, so, so you've been playing with, a, is there one that you liked? You know me, I love wearing things in front of my face, so... Uh, <laughs> no, no, I think, is there, is there I mean, one that you played that you no, were like, here's this the thing. is pretty good? I want... You should go to AVN. Just like everything else, I want games or experiences that are right. different different and good, like, and, and special, right? And there's, I think right now we're seeing a lot of things that are games that we've seen before, mm -hmm. and they're tweaking them for these experiences. I haven't found the thing yet that I'm like, oh, I really need to sit in the middle of my living room wearing this giant... Helmet. Right, and I haven't got there yet, and maybe that's coming, and that stuff, you know, you hardware, right hardware comes first, and then games. So, of course. Uh, well, me and Justin did this Oculus two-player thing. It was kind of like minorly like Dark Souls, and right. it was third person. Was which it was the weird. one where you switched genders and you were rubbing yourself? It was that. It one? It was that, except we were the same gender, so it was, it was really easy. It was like we could skip the tutorial, but uh, it's little it little was, dudes fighting each other, or maybe and, they like, were girls and magic. But anyway. You but jump what? in the other guy's lap, but smack it, him in the face. What? It was in a virtual third person. You jump it's crazy. It's so real. Lap. It's hard to explain, but your little dude does. It's third you. person you in the jump sense. Jump into another guy's lap. <laughs> no, literally, it's third person in the sense that you have a little avatar, okay. but then there's a secondary avatar that's supposed to be you. So if you look down, you see like fake legs. But I was holding an it was holding an Xbox 360 controller right here, and I looked down, and there was the Xbox 360 controller, and there was like this weird like short circuit in my head for a second where I was like, oh wait, is, am I look, because it was modeled really well and everything, right. and I was like, is it, am I actually holding this? It was like kind of a inverted phantom limb thing. Right. It's but then you look again for a second and you're like, oh wait, I don't have tattoos or like a pinky ring. Because <laughs> the, the character model for the, the dudes are like all, you know, uh, and I crazy hair. jacket and The tattoos. guys were all bald. Right. That was the, probably the most interesting like moment. I'm, I'm the worst person to do headsets because I can only do the head tracking, I can't do the 3D. Right, and unfortunately I haven't had, like I have my Sony appointment tomorrow, I've got a couple other appointments tomorrow, mm -hmm. so I haven't had time to go fully hands-on with them. I know the Oculus guys are right around the corner from us. Yeah, so I think they're gonna so come I, they're in, gonna actually. come in, so I kind of skipped that line waiting for them to come in. But right now, it's, it's that thing everyone's talking about, but I don't, so was 3D at CES five years ago, right? Like, right. I just don't know if we're, re I don't know if we're ready for this, you know, where we walk into our house and we put on these headsets. I was talking to Rohan about it, you know, he, he just had a kid and he's like, it's hard enough for him to play games and try to keep one eye on the kid mm -hmm. while he's, you know, playing Titanfall. And now he's like, well, I'm not going to be able to do that if I'm like, if I'm inside this world, it's going to be really hard. Like, and I feel like we're all that way. Like, I don't sit there and play games anymore. I sit there and play games while I'm listening to a podcast. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm fucking around on Twitter. I'm snapping to TV. I've I mean, got, that's like, the same reason. I've I got want, multiple things going on at once. That's the same and, reason I don't even want second screen. Right. You know, like yeah. that the Assassin's Creed app. I'm like, I'm glad you like it, Megan, but like, I, it's it's not for me. You know. Yeah, and but that stuff's also like fun when you're not in front of the TV, right? Like those things. Yeah. You want, things you want to take to you know when you're at work during the day. So I just don't know if we're ready for 
VR yet. I think, right. it, but I think this is the shot, right? This is the time. If we are ready, right? I this mean, is the push, and this is when they need to do it. I think you're 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 exactly right. You're still looking for that right game, and I think right. you're still they're still tre tweaking the tech that goes behind it and trying to understand exactly what people want out of a VR headset uh, going into it. And so I think once they finally get that, now then we can start talking about games. Like, what do you want out of this? And I've been talking to them, and I think some, like, even, like, different experiences, like a, th like a VR movie, mm -hmm. where, like, you may be a dinner guest, and, like, it's, like, a Thanksgiving dinner, and you get to watch, like, this family just explode at a table, or maybe you're, like, the uh, passenger <laughs> side of a car chase. <laughs> Unlock well, literal mode. Well, I mean, I, honestly, no, the, most, <laughs> the most interesting thing I've heard, and maybe it's just because I'm a giant Game of Thrones Nerd is uh, uh, down at South by last week. Did you hear about this? No. You were able to oh, like climbing the wall. Yeah, you like you were standing on like a platform and it was blowing like cold air as you were like climbing the wall using the Oculus. Oh, or, nice. You know, and you get to look around. And it's like, okay, I'm interested now. But right, you do that once and you're like, that's cool. I'm not probably not gonna do it again. So it's the same issue we have with Connect right now. It's like I think Connect's a really cool piece of tech. There's right. no games for it. Yeah, th that's There's right. There's not enough for it. Like I did actually get to play a really uh, cool game at uh, Xbox, uh, X ID at Xbox, where you were inside of the game, and it was sort of a platforming game, but your shadow was actually changed the look of the game as you were going into it. And then uh, I was talking to the developer, and he said that other... He was trying to work in multiple people so that their shadows would actually create like new worlds for the other players to be in. So you would have to have multiple people sort of like moving their bodies around and figuring out, okay, whose shadow should be, who needs to be front so we can have this shadow in front of this shadow so my character can harp, hop from here to here to here to here and then up to here to the door. And then you open the door and it's a family having Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> and then they explode. And, well, <laughs> it's a full circle. So, uh, well, speaking of games, there's so many games we can't talk about. Yeah, it's uh, that game we can't talk about, this other game we're not allowed to talk about. So there's a ton of embargoes, which is like the worst it's thing out of It's weird for right? Whatever, it's a game developers conference, so I always feel just fortunate to be here. Yeah, um, we're kind of sponging off of the, you know. But, you know, we got to see uh, Darkest Dungeon, which we kind of had the, some exclusives for. How was, uh, how was it? How did it look with the, the stuff you saw? I mean, you know, it's super alpha, but it was pretty fun. You could see it coming together, like mm -hmm. the mental effects, like people... Your, your guy's kind of falling back in line. and I mean, I don't know, Justin, you played a, a bit more than I did, anything? No, I kept, it, uh, kept crashing. Yeah. <laughs> I, I had some crashes. It was alpha. It's but alpha. Then, yeah, it's, it's alpha. But, uh, uh, you also got to check out Crawl, which was a game that I saw like earlier on. Uh, it had a great trailer a couple the of weeks ago. The trailer's amazing. Right. <laughs> yeah, uh, how was it. that? Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. It's a lot of fun. You know, I played against the, the two devs. They definitely didn't hold back on me. <laughs> I, did, I did pretty well, though. Nice. I came in. I came in second. But the guy went to the store and bought like a dark spear, and he's like, "Yeah, this spear drives you insane." So your guy kind of like you know gets down on the floor every once in a while. But you can cancel animation by doing this, and it's kind of overpowered. <laughs> he's like, "I'm probably gonna kill the boss in about two seconds here." It's like, <laughs> okay, but uh, yeah, you know, you go to a, a sign on the ground or a trap, and you summon an enemy like a skeleton or a wolf or a spider. Everyone has kind of like two attacks, and you just try to do as much damage to the hero as you can. And when you kill him, you get to be the hero. You try to level up. If someone hits 10, they fight the boss. It's a really good concept. That's cool. And then, like, the boss itself, uh, if, if I'm correct, like, multiple people can, like, take control of, like, one boss. So, like, one right. guy's There's, like, like a head, arm. and he has l two limbs. So, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Everyone, like everyone that. who's not a player is a ghost, so you just possess whatever. So you possess the part of the boss. One, one arm throws bubbles. One of them kind of makes, like, slime. And he has a big, you know, eyeball that shoots out a right. death beam type thing. Or, or he might vomit death. I, you know, vomit, I'd yeah. have to go back and, and look at the footage. But um, yeah. Sounds like a little bit like uh, taking control of the boss, like Evolve. One game that we're allowed to talk about, right? Oh, nice. I think. Yeah, are we yeah. allowed to talk about Evolve? Right. Is that we one? Are. Where we finally got hands on. I know you had gone hands on with it before, right? right? And it was a bunch of us. Rohan was in there. And I thought it felt fun. Uh, it felt. I thought playing as the monster was actually the best part. Oh, yeah. As I, the I hunters, it feels like the map's a tiny bit too big. It feels like you're just running around in circles for. A while as you hear the boss, and you're like, "Oh, he's 200 meters away," and you're like, oh, "Okay, I'm gonna jog over there." And then it's like, "Oh, now he's 200 meters that way," and you're like, "I'm gonna jog over there." And then once you get to that po moment, it's like crazy hectic, and you're knocking people around. But it's just like, I feel like there's a lot of 
Slow well, you, build you got to get someone to, you know, maybe if the medic sees them, they tranquilize well, them. Um, They're yeah. like, hey, Trapper, you know, throw a harpoon in this dude so we can, you know, ultimately you want to get the, the bubble, the barrier, right? Yep. So every, every group of people will have that barrier. So that's like the way you do it. You yeah, I mean, there's the, definitely the ways to, to, get, on the to do it, right? right? And it's just, it's getting to him. I feel yeah. like yeah, takes being the monsters, long being the monsters way more fun. And then the monsters. Smacking people around. Feels unique. It's different. It uh, kind of reminded me of almost like a like a Gearbox game in a weird way. And I don't know if oh, it was really? like the art style or it just had that weird. I can I don't, see the it, art. I didn't it. was just it, something. It, felt, it kind of reminded me of what was it? The uh, Brothers in Arms, the Furious the one that never four, showed up. The yeah. ones that never showed up. It had like a little similar vibe, at least in the art style. They're awesome. Um, for they're the characters. four dudes. Yeah. I don't know. It was just... It, I think I'm just way. looking I'm at curious. it. It obviously like, and I'm not trying to actually make a pun, but it does actually look like an evolved form of Left 4 Dead. Like it yeah. obviously has Left 4 Dead DNA with a bit of the Team Fortress, you know, with the class-based system. And it's, it's, is Being the Monster a little clunky? It's a little clunky, but, but it's I think by it's, design, it's, right? it's by design. And, and obviously, like, once you learn those maps, right, like, that's the problem with any multiplayer game. Right. It's like, I don't know where I'm going. I don't know where I'm going. And then you're, you know, four or five matches in, you're like, okay, so the secret weapon's here. And to kill this guy, you got to get the, at this position. The so ecology of the stuff was get cool, there. though. Like, the eating or, like, I see birds. I yeah. see birds. It, it felt I like, like they were building cool. a world, which was cool. And just it, maybe the maps were a little big, but maybe I just need to learn them. Sounds cool. Uh, was there anything else that you guys saw that you can talk about? Uh, well, I, yeah, I waited in line, but the line was actually pretty long for Goat Simulator. Oh, my God. Finally. But, well, that uh, comes out April 1st. Yeah. It, no, it's Goat. 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 Uh, I mean, at this what, one point, you just see the guy, like, he's climbing this giant crane, and there's right. a dude, like, sitting on the end, having his lunch, and the goat just barrels forward and knocks him <laughs> off, and it's like, okay, well, I'm going to be playing this game. It's, 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 it's a, amazing. It's also the one where you can, like, pick up objects with your tongue, and yep. so you can chase people with, like, axes that are attached to your tongue and things like that going into it. And I think one of the one of the crazy... <laughs> what, what, what and one the, of the... Cr- and then one of, one the, of the crazy, crazy things, things with it is one of the crazy things about it is they do, they weren't going to make this game, like they they had made it for a jam and they were like oh this is really funny we're going to put out this video, and they were like oh you know maybe we'll do it for our friends caught fire and people were like oh you're going to make this game and they're like no we're not and then after a while they figured out people would buy the game. Game development. Game development for Video you. game. And I'm going to say this now, like, everyone's talking about VR, but I think the Unreal announcement is going to be, years from now, is going to be the thing that people are going to uh, I, are going to point at and be like, that was a that was a big deal. Yeah, that's a good... As Unity moves in on Game Maker, Game Maker talks to bigger publishers. Well, even, like, and, Crytek tried it a little bit, you know, this week with it doing it for indies. But, yeah, mm-hmm. that, that, the, the, the Unreal announcement... It's interesting. Interesting. It's I mean, really, so really For people that don't know, it's... Nineteen dollars a month, right. and you pretty much have Unreal Engine Four. Everything from the source, source code, code yeah. to tutorials from it's the huge. staff. They're they're building a community, and it's nineteen bucks a month. And if you put out a game, they take five percent of it. If you make money, they're going right. to take five percent of it. If you you know, it sounds like if you don't make money, it's, then they take nothing. They get nothing. They're going you know, if there's ads or free to play, they're supporting everything. They're supporting students, and, which is great. Which is a really smart move in their part. And and this. And the engine's so easy to use. I mean, it look you know, from the outside looking at it, how quickly they're manipulating it. It seems very easy to use. So if you have an interest in, interest in making games for less than three hundred dollars a month, you could have one or a year. You have one of the best tools in the industry. Oh, completely. It's crazy. It, no, it's, I mean, going back to like the whole goat simulator for a game that no one thought for a bunch of guys who were just sort of like making a game for the fun of it, and they thought no one would have any sort of interest whatsoever in their game, they suddenly find themselves with like, how can I get this game? When can I play this game? Yeah. What can I do with this game? And it just shows you that even even like the crazy small ideas can have a following and a fan base. Well, now these crazy small ideas have a very cheap, accessible way to take these crazy small ideas. Another. Another, another cheap, right. accessible Excellent. way. Completely. Yeah. You know, it's, I, yeah, I was tweeting from that event and I just, I think most of my responses were students and like schools going, can students use it? Yeah. Can schools license it? It's just like, it's it's exciting to see like, everyone always asks, you know, you get, we all get the question, I know the developers get the question more than us, is how do you get in the industry? And it's like, 
make, make games. <laughs> yeah. And now it's like it's really easy to make games. There's it's, so many options out there. We're seeing ridiculous creative fishing. games, huge <laughs> triple A <laughs> games. You know, we saw a bunch of triple A games we're not allowed to talk about yet. Right. That look great. And then you see games made by one person and it's yeah. just mind blowing how Well, you see, you know, Papers Please, which completely yep. stole the show. Swept the awards last Swept night. the awards. And that's that's pretty much like a game jam game, once again, something that someone made over 48 hours and it was like, this is pretty good. I'm going to expand it and see where it leads. And like, it just completely sweeps the place. And, and totally worth playing. Oh, for completely. Everyone in the world. Yeah, it's, so good. it's uh... <laughs> yeah, and it is, it's amazing for, for what it is to explain to someone that you are checking out passports. And that's the, that's the game. That's the full game for you. And that is an amazing experience, has an amazing story to it. Sold. No, I think uh, you know the, the ability to see redacted AAA title that we're not allowed to talk about, all the way down to games like Papers Please, Sweep the Awards, and VR goggles everywhere. It's stuff like that that I makes mean, even non games like best. Gone Home. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oops. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But it's just like that's. I think this is what makes GDC special. Like it's why it's my favorite show. No, completely. It's, E3 is its own crazy spectacle, but GDC is where. It just it's this magic kind of like everyone gets together. You walk into a bar and it's like Molyneux talking to a group of students. Oh or, yeah. You know, you Cliffy giving advice to someone new or people that you people haven't heard of in ten as years. George R. R. Martin. Were they supposedly? <laughs> really? Or was it George? I, Warren Spector said he saw someone dressed up as George R. R. Martin. And doesn't he already know George R. R. Martin? So it probably wasn't George R. R. Martin. It's really hard for me to say R. R. By the way. <laughs> Sorry. But it's great. Well, I think we're done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're tired. Yeah. We are very we're tired. tired. I'm about on about maybe well, three hours of sleep. Three so hours of sleep and only two cups week. of coffee. More coffee. More coffee for all. In Colin's head. <sighs> come on out here, Colin. You've been behind come the camera. On. Yeah, come too on. Too long. Come hang out. Colin. Yeah. Colin's been filming. Colin's been come come again. You're just so bad. Colin's been filming for us in that for years. No, yeah, yeah. Just just come on. Come on, there you go. Colin's been yeah, shooting uh, very awkward. for game trailers. You were in San my first Francisco shooter. Since 06. Uh, thank yeah. you for game game trailers. Trailers. Wow. With you guys Look how much you've grown. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he was a Wii shooter back then. And now he's and wearing a comedy so band shirt. So awkward. So very awkward. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. All right, have a oh. good show, guys. Uh, good show. I gotta go catch that Zork thing.